Hi, my name is Elise Mertz, and I'm a freshman in the Honors College here at George Mason University. Last semester, I took the class Honors 110, Principles of Research and Inquiry, in which I conducted a literature review on the question of how overexcitabilities interact with giftedness in adolescents in the United States. Overexcitabilities are a little discussed concept, first described by the Polish psychologist Kazimierz Dabrowski in the 1960s. The Polish word which he used more literally translates to superstimulability, and it refers to five areas in which an individual might have a more intense than normal experience. These areas are essential, having to do with the five senses, emotional, imaginational, intellectual, having to do with curiosity and a deep love of learning, and psychomotor, having to do with physical movement. These overexcitabilities, or OEs for short, also relate to another idea which Dabrowski had, that of positive disintegration. Basically, this is a scientific framework for the idea that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Dabrowski hypothesized that an individual who lived through a very stressful or difficult experience might experience a, di a disintegration of their sense of self. However, he hypothesized that those with OEs would be able to rebuild themselves after that experience as stronger, kinder, more empathetic individuals with a deeper understanding of both themselves and others. These concepts present enough to study in and of themselves. For one thing, there don't really seem to be any studies surveying general populations to find trends in overexcitabilities. There also doesn't seem to be any kind of empirical framework for the idea of positive disintegration, and that would be tremendously helpful in letting scholars further study it, clarify the ideas, and revise the content of this theory. A fair amount of scholarly research, however, has narrowed in on the connection between overexcitabilities and giftedness. Giftedness is a difficult thing to study because there are a number of different definitions that exist. Uh, one that seems to sum up all of the criteria in the scholarly studies I looked at is Joseph Renzulli's three-factor definition of giftedness, which defines it as the overlap of above-average ability, task commitment, and creativity. It's interesting to compare this to Don Clifton's definition of strengths, where he calls them the product of talent times investment. Both of these models recognize that an individual may have a genetic predisposition towards giftedness or any other kind of strength, but they also acknowledge the tremendous role that hard work play in developing those strengths. A number of studies have explored connections between giftedness and overexcitabilities. After all, overexcitabilities often result in people feeling and acting like this, when the expectation, particularly for a gifted student, is for them to feel and act more like this. That often leaves teachers and parents at a loss as to how to properly support these students. And the students themselves might face bullying from their peers, they might not have adequate coping mechanisms to deal with the intense emotions that come with the overexcitabilities. They can also end up feeling inadequate under either internal or external expectations of higher performance. OEs are also linked to perfectionism and self-esteem issues, particularly for middle school girls. These issues may be exacerbated if the student doesn't have the resources that they need to learn proper coping mechanisms. It's essential for parents and teachers and the gifted themselves to be further educated on these topics so that they can learn how to both embrace the, the benefits and overcome the challenges brought by overexcitabilities. A number of pathways for future research exist and many questions have not been adequately answered on this topic, any and all research findings would be very helpful in furthering understanding of overexcitabilities and how they relate to various factors. Um, also, check out the references on the next slide, which you can use for further reading on the topic if you're interested. Bye!